Matt, you've got to mute yourself. Unmute yourself. Sorry, mute yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Phil Savile from CIS, which is an IT support provider and cyber security specialist. Today I'm joined on the panel by Neil Lawson-Smith, the MD of CIS, and Matt Grantham, the Operations Director. Give us a wave, chaps. Hi, good morning. So I'm going to do a short 10-minute talk on the hidden risks when working at home. Then open it up for questions from myself and the panel to answer. So please submit any questions that you've got in the comments below and we'll come back to them at the end. So I'm gonna start off by sharing a, a few slides with you. Um, this obviously helps me stop, you know, stop you looking at me continuously. Um, and uh, to be fair, I've been trying to grow a beard for the last sort of four weeks in isolation. And it's been a bit of an epic fail, if I'm honest. Um, so there we go. Just bear with me. Right. OK. OK. Right, so COVID-19 is a virus which has been causing huge disruption, um, but with many businesses now getting familiar with working at home, you want to ensure that you don't suffer the business problems of a cyber virus as well. From the beginning, cybersecurity hasn't always been at the forefront of business owners' minds. Just being operational at home was a huge success for most. With the risk of a cyber attack being higher than ever and the impact of the business could be critical, data loss, ransomware, downtime, GDPR breaches are just a few of the risks. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from this today is this. Is my business secure enough? Have I put in enough measures to reduce the risk? Hopefully the next 10 minutes will answer some of those questions and give you something to think about and even give you the opportunity to ask any more delving questions to us at the end. So there are four areas that I'm going to cover. One, devices that are being currently used. Two, the broadband connectivity at home. Three, different communication methods. And four, company data. So there are two types of devices being used at home, personal computers and company computers. With either computer, you need to know if you're running a Windows 7 operating system or older, as this is not supported by Microsoft and therefore no security updates will be applied, leaving it very vulnerable to cyber threats. So make sure you're running a Windows 10 or the latest Mac operating system, please. Antivirus, ransomware protection. Are the home workers using personal computers with an inadequate product, a free product, or even an out of date product? This is your first line of defense and you need to get it right. So with also with personal mobiles and tablets now being used more than ever, these provide another device to store company data and emails without the understanding of the condition of the device and the threats to it. And of course, other devices to be aware of, adding a USB device like a USB drive to back up or copy data, charging mobiles from your PC, connecting printers and routers where with default credentials. It may be a low risk, but it's still a risk you can easily avoid. And updates. When you're in the office, I imagine at the end of the day, most people just turned off their PC, which automatically applied an update before leaving to go home. But we believe when in the office, when in at home, sorry, this happens less frequent. Let's be honest, people are leaving their PCs on um, overnight and so on. And if you're going to do updates, please apply them at least once a week. Um, we recommend ideally on a Wednesday or a Thursday because Microsoft do a, what's called a patch Tuesday. And that's when they release a reasonably sized big update, which normally include security updates as well. So then we go on to connectivity. 
Your home internet performance may dip at times. This is because your home broadband connections are usually provided with a contention ratio of 50 to one. So this means 49 other people or the houses will be sharing the same sort of connection as you. Um, and when all these people come online during the day, the network can get congested and slow down. Also, let's face it, with homeschooling and everyone at home, the number of devices on at the same time has increased. As many people now are streaming films and music or accessing online schoolwork, etc. I mean, I must admit, I counted how many I have in my home. Four mobiles, three laptops, two iPads, three Alexas, one PC, two smart TVs. I mean, there's 15 devices there. You multiply that by other 49 other houses and you could be up to 750 devices using that broadband. And if it's not being used, turn the device off. Look at increasing your broadband even. Yeah, talk to the people that are using in your household and maybe allocate set times of, of doing certain activities online. Or better still, consider an additional line to the house for just work, an additional broadband so it's keeping work and home separate. And don't forget, some people are remoting to the office as well. So the performance is relying on two broadband connections. Again, it's worth reviewing why they are connecting to the office and is there an alternative solution? Answer is probably yes. But is it a secure connection as well as the cyber hackers are really trying to exploit this more so now? Then we move on to communication methods. This has obviously been a huge increase in email traffic internally as well as externally, which the bad guys are taking advantage on with using spoof and phishing emails. Um, that to obtain sort of cash or, or login credentials or get you to download a malicious software from an email attachment. There has also been a huge increase in the purchase of COVID-19 related domains. And these again have been used to create fake websites and fake emails. So, and also be particularly aware of similar Zoom domains. So please be vigilant when receiving, especially an urgent email, if it doesn't write or doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Home workers have been finding their own methods to communicate. And of course, this causes its own problems. They generally, they're using apps and tools before that they've never used before, and they've never been reviewed properly or understood the risks involved, and probably not implemented the right security measures. House Party or Zoom are great examples of the, in the news recently. And of course, communication between the staff and one another is more important now than it's ever been. So people started using great apps like Yammer and Teams uh, and WhatsApp groups uh, have been a really great help. And did you know you can download the WhatsApp to your PC? It just makes it easier and quicker for you to respond to messages. But let's face it, there's still no better communication than a phone call, obviously excluding face to face. But not everybody wants to do a video call. And obviously people just don't want to pick up their phone and call you. So this can be achieved quite easily um, using a VoIP hosted solution. We at CAS use one and it allows us to do online chat, see the availability of the person that we want to talk to and make and make and receive calls as if we're from the office. So we can use an app on our PC, we can use our mobile phone, or we can even use the handset that we brought from our office and plug it into um, our network. So we still use the office numbers, it allows us to transfer calls and it just makes things a lot more easier. So then we move on to company data and accessing it. Now, this is the most important part really. Firstly, we recommend that you keep, try and keep your data in one location. It is very tempting to email files to each other, but before you know it, you lose track of where it is, which is the latest version and what devices are being used to even access it. Obviously, a cloud storage solution is great for remote workers, but make sure you understand the downfalls. You need to make sure you, that you've got the advanced security access settings applied, and these vary according to the services that, you wanted, that you're choosing. 
but don't fall into the trap of just lo loading everything to sort of Dropbox, SharePoint, Google Drive, whatever the solution is, without understanding the security risks. And, and make sure the steps you take and, are, are right for you and your business. And if you're unsure, please seek advice. We have found owners that have been quite relaxed about who has permission to what files and folders, especially when they've been in the office before COVID-19. But, you know, basically they could really, they could monitor them. They could see obviously the computers that they were using, they will be talking to them, they would be inter interacting with them, but now they're at home, it makes life a lot easier. So make sure people have only got access to files and folders that they need to, to do their day-to-day -day work because before you know it, something could go terribly wrong. And whether you're at office or at home, you still need to remain GDPR compliant and make sure that you're protecting your business data and obviously more importantly, any personal information within that. So, thank you for your time. I hope you found it useful and it's given you something to think about. Let's see if we have any questions for Neil, Matt and I to answer. Bear with me, I'll just stop this. Great, over to you, Erin. Great, thanks so much for that uh, really interesting talk. Um, it was really good advice. So we're, we're moving on to a kind of Q&A style question now. And we've had a couple of questions from Facebook and a couple of questions um, from emails. So we'll just kind of split them round and um, kind of answer them between you, if that's all right. So the first question we've had from emails is from Gary Millard from Royal. Uh, he says, what should I do if I've been hacked or received an email saying that I've been hacked? What are the first steps that I should take? Matt, you got any opinions on that? Yes, okay, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great opening question, Gary. So the, the first thing that I would do is change passwords. That's the first thing straight away, change your passwords. Um, what you would then have to start looking into is what accounts have been compromised. We all know somebody that will have the same password for multiple different accounts. So you must go through all of those accounts and change the passwords straight away. Um, when you're satisfied you've changed all of your accounts, you need to have a look at the activity. So look at your um, financial and credit, credit card account details just to make sure there's no um, strange activities going on. Again, you may have to speak to your bank just to make sure that you've covered all the bases. Um, what you would also have to do, so there's four or five things, uh, not in particular order, but just four or five things. Scan the PC to make sure there isn't anything on there. And if there is, you may need to reinstall the operating system from a good uh, backup that you've got, hopefully. Um, and also another thing that I think people forget to do is actually inform your friends and colleagues that you may have been compromised because you may have been compromised and then it's, it's sent out emails to others. So it, you're not looking for sympathy from people, you're just informing your colleagues and your friends that you've had this and it may have um, gone into their email. Great, has anyone else got anything to add to that? No? Okay, we'll move on to the next question then. Uh, so we've got a question from Richard Sparks on Facebook. Richard says, are the main applications such as Google Drive, Dropbox and Zoom safe to use? Someone has suggested also using TeamViewer, which is a remote control um, software. Is that also secure? Neil, have you got any thoughts? Yeah, like all systems, fundamentally they are safe to use. However, they also have to be set up correctly. So it's very easy to put these in, not think about security. And then you could open yourself up to sharing documents that you didn't realize. So it is important to make sure that you uh, get familiar with the best practices. So all people like Zoom and Dropbox, they all have guides that says, this is how you should use our systems to make sure that data doesn't leak out or, or doesn't become uh, open to the public and, and it often uh, it's the un unintended consequences that causes problems and people don't realize that there were uh, these security features and this is where we saw zoom having a lot of problems recently 
in that uh, everyone's jumped onto Zoom to use a video conferencing and not set a password. And consequently, this phenomenon known as Zoom bombing, where people just join the meeting because they could randomly guess the meeting numbers just to, just to join. So uh, it, it, while everyone has had this pressure of time to get up and going, the security has been a, an afterthought. So I would encourage everyone just to visit their technology websites or better still, speak to your IT provider. They will definitely or should be able to give you some good pointers as to what you should be doing. Um, but apart from the security of actually using them, uh, other areas you've got to think about are the, the backups. If you're using these uh, temporary technologies that you haven't used before, are they being backed up like your normal office backup? Or are they sitting on your, your home drive or your laptop and you've got no backup at all? You've got to really think about, uh, from a business viewpoint, audit trails for GDPR, uh, monitoring, how you're picking up where that information's going. And so we're genuinely concerned that potentially, although this technology might be, quote, safe to use, there's a lot of loopholes which, to the uninitiated, are going to end up in some hot water if you're not careful. So do please uh, take the time to uh, watch a YouTube video about how to secure Dropbox or Zoom or TeamViewer. All of those are available, but you've just got to know, come from it from a, uh, a, a knowing of what to do and how, how to use these apps safely. Great. And another question from Facebook, Phil, I'll direct this one to you. Um, James White asks, how do I know if an email is a phishing email or not? Great question as well, James. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> normally an email, um, you can, it's asking normally for an urgency re um, request to do something. Um, you can check on spelling because they tend to be the odds because they're normally coming from abroad, so international. So again, just look at the wording, um, see who it's to because what you'll find is it'll either put in um, a sort of your email address and so on. Um, but also the question is, is if you then click on forward, it will show you the actual email address. I mean, you can go further, but just to see the actual email address is from because the display name and the actual email address can be different. So just be aware. And of course, if it's got a link in there, then just hover your mouse over that link to see where it's taking you. And if you're unsure, delete it, go online to the actual website and access it through that way. So, and again, the attachments as well, unless you're expecting something, I would avoid downloading attachment if it looks suspicious of any type whatsoever. Great. Um, we've got another question from uh, email from Bernadette Summers from John Welch and Stammers. Matt, I'll direct this one to you. Um, Bernadette says, what are some steps that I can take to ensure my system stay secure? Uh, yeah, so uh, a, a few simple steps. Uh, make sure that Windows firewalls are on, on your devices. Uh, use the built-in firewall features on even home, uh, home routers. Um, one of the, the most important things that we can't emphasize enough is making sure that your devices are up to date. Now, believe it or not, it's a, such a simple process that everyone can do once a week, hit the update button and just make sure that your devices are up to date. There is that saying that you're only as, um, as protected as your weakest link. So if your PCs have got antivirus software on them and you've got all of this other security uh, applications on your PC, but you're not updating your Windows operating system, you're, you're making that device a vulnerable device on your, on, on your network. So one of the key things that everyone can do, just run updates and make sure that your, your device is getting all of the relevant security patches from Microsoft. <clears throat> Which leads me on to the other thing. If you're using end of life operating systems, they are not getting any more security updates. So as much as, like I've just mentioned, you can have the best antivirus software applications on those devices, but they've not been updated. Uh, for example, 2008 server uh, and Windows 7 haven't had a Windows security update since January. So you, are a vul you, you have a vulnerability there and hackers take advantage of that. So that's a, a massive thing that everyone could do. Education as well. So, End users, their day-to-day -day isn't to, um, 
to know all, all, the, all the things related to IT. That's why you, you have IT support from, from companies like CIS. Their jobs are not to know of all of these bits and pieces. So it's very important for uh, employees to have some education or, or some training around, like what we've mentioned just now, phishing emails. A lot of hackers prey on people clicking on links. So I read somewhere uh, only yesterday that over 70% of hackers prey on phishing emails because it's just sending an email to someone and having that um, essence of urgency on the email. Press on this to see this. Press on this to go to here. Press on this because we need your details for such and such. And people just see that and immediately click on it and that's where things come in. So again, a lot of these things can be prevented simply by having some training given to the staff members. Um, the next thing to, to keep your system secure, if all of that fails or if something fails around there, you must have backup. So we keep refer referencing almost with all of these questions are referencing the same things. Backups um, uh, is one of them. We always have to make sure that we've got backups of all of our systems, including endpoints. And that's it for that one. Thanks, Mark. Um, we've got one last question before we'll um, wrap things up. Uh, Neil, we'll direct this one to you. This is from Hugh Sparks on Facebook. He says, how do I know that you as an IT provider also won't be hacked and compromised? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question, Hugh. We give lots of advice uh, to other people about security. Of course, you'd expect us to be right on top of it ourselves, and certainly we've designed all our systems from the ground up to be secure right from the get-go. So we do live by what we tell other people. So that's that's a really good thing uh, to, to know. Uh, we use uh, technology right across our organisation, and we look at it before it goes live and make sure that we have registered that security right up to the best notch that we can get. Uh, you may be aware, guys, uh, Hugh, that there are several levels of, of uh, accreditation with cybersecurity uh, to help uh, prevent hacking. So there's a cyber essentials that everyone knows about. So a lot of small and medium businesses, that's a really, really good uh, scheme to get onto. And, and you can look at that uh, uh, on the government website, the, the uh, National Cyber uh, Security Centre. Uh, there's a very simple set of guidelines to follow and really every business can follow that. There's a slightly uh, more involved Cyber Essentials Plus, which uh, has a few extra commitments, but really does give you a very good grounding to protect yourself. And then at the very top is the ISO 27001 accreditation, which is the gold standard. Uh, in, in data protection and, uh, and it's a, a real commitment to data protection and we CIS gained that uh, accreditation some years ago and, and naturally that gives our uh, suppliers and customers absolute peace of mind that we have this nailed so uh, not only do we use the best technology we make sure that we put it in a very very uh, uh, smart way and that's audited every single year so every year we have external people come in and make sure that we are uh, as good as we say we are. Uh, so um, that's how we make sure that we don't get hacked. It's not a, a perfect world, but we do make sure that uh, we use the best tech, that we implement it well, and we keep everything locked down. And, and we use that same knowledge and know-how to offer that to our clients as well, so they can also have peace of mind. Great. Thanks, Neil and Matt, for answering, and Phil for answering those questions. Um, thanks, Phil, also for your really interesting talk. Um, I think that's all the questions we've got time for today, but we'll be back next week with the next section of your webinar and some more people to answer questions. Thank you everyone for joining us and we'll end the video there. Thanks everyone, bye. Thank you, bye.